Welcome, 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 guys. My name is Jimmy Stevens. Welcome to the Atlanta School of Marriage and Relationship, where we're helping you develop strong emotional relationships with your partner, most importantly, with yourself. So listen, one of the things we talked about uh, before was understanding how to process emotional experiences, etc. So today I want to talk about something that a lot of us don't think about in relationships. Number one is how does my spouse my and my children, how do they experience me? Because here's the thing about being a person. Here's the thing about being a human. We're going to look at things from our own intention and we're going to look at things from our own experience. And so people experience us only from how we behave toward them. So we can have a clouded view or perception of ourselves in a relationship because we are not asking or looking or being intentional about the right things, which is what? How does my spouse, my partner, my child, how do they experience me emotionally? So let's start with the spouse, the partner. If you had to present a card to your partner at the end of every evening. And this might be a good exercise for you to do. Sometimes I've actually had couples do this. Uh, if you had to present a card to them, rating your service or their experience with you for that day, uh, how would they rate you? How would they rate your uh, attitude? How would they rate your words? How would they rate your tone? How would they rate the feeling you gave them that day? Wow, what a thought. How would how would they rate you? Because how they would rate you is how they are experiencing you. And how they experience you is there is where is determining their emotional connection with you or disconnection if it's good guess what they're moving closer if it's bad emotionally they're moving further away so the key question here is how does my partner experience me now not how i want them to but how do they like not how you think they do but how do they experience you so a good way to notice is ask Ask, I dare you, because <laughs> some of y'all ain't going to do it. I dare you to ask your partner. I dare you to ask your child, your kid, your, parent, your, 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 your husband or your wife, how do you experience me emotionally? Like, is it a good experience with me or is it like, okay, it's, here we go again? Or is it all bad? What are the best experiences that you've had with me? Because when you, when you know what the best experiences that your partner had with you, your spouse had with you, guess what? Here it is. You can duplicate it. You can know when you're shining. You can watch the tapes back and say, oh, yeah, that was a good play. I really, oh, I did good on that one. Why? So you can duplicate it. So the key is, how does my partner, my spouse, and my child experience me? And with your children, here's the understanding that you have to understand. Children, early on, Again, if you watch any of my content before, you already know that those emotional experiences are formed, are framed in early childhood. Early childhood emotional gaps, early childhood expectations, all that's created with that parent-child relationship. So you want, for the most part, have your child experience you in a good way emotionally. Why? Because this helps them come talk to you when they're older. I'm going to say that again. This helps them come talk to you when you're older. I hear so many times, and I've seen it, you know, you've probably seen it on television shows, and you may have uttered these words yourself. You know you can come talk to me, don't you? That's like the biggest cop-out ever. You know you can come talk to me, don't you? It's the biggest cop-out because here it is. They're only going to come to you if they feel they can come to you. They're not going to come to you because you said you can come to me. They're going to come to you because emotionally the experience is good. Here are some things you don't want to do as a parent. You don't want to criticize, chastise, and push back on your child's communication to you. 
If your child asks you a question, you say, but that's the stupidest thing I ever heard somebody say. They ain't coming back. <laughs> Hang it up. They ain't coming back. Because you made them feel like crap. You made them feel bad. Well, Jimmy, I mean, it was a stupid question. Okay, let process it. Man, that's crazy. But don't don't give them that experience. You don't have to share that with them. You can think it's stupid all day. You can know it's stupid, but give them experience that you're hearing them. Give them the experience that you are receiving information from them. So the next time they have an issue or if they have an issue, they always feel comfortable talking to you. Either they feel comfortable talking to you or they're going to feel comfortable talking to some other knucklehead kid who don't know nothing and they're counseling them, right? A peer is counseling your child on what to do. Disaster is coming. Okay. So how do I do that? Understand you, you, it's all about the experience. How do they experience you? One of the things me and my wife did early on in our relationship with our children is this. Never, ever criticize their statements their ideas, their um, desires, listen, validate it. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. I see. All right. You like that? Okay. And leave it alone. You're the smart one, right? So come back. If it's crazy, come back a day or two and approach it with wisdom, with discretion, which means if they said something stupid, they thought something stupid, so if you saying, man, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard anybody say, don't ever say nothing. Okay, it was crazy. It was stupid. You heard it. Come back two days later, a day later. And, 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 and address the situation, but don't address it. Share the essence of it. 